Hi. Last time we talked about modesty and uh, I received some questions as a result. So I want to deal with those today, but I want us to talk for a little bit before that about a, a principle I mentioned last time that I want to reinforce today that I think will help us as we uh, talk about this issue. Let's talk about shame. Shame is a good thing. Um, it's not viewed as a good thing in today's society. Many people want to be shameless. They, they want to be able to do anything, uh, behave in any way without having any shame whatsoever. And that's not new. Uh, that's something that, that we find uh, has always been the case. In Philippians chapter 3 and verses 18 and 19, Paul says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Here he talks about having glory in their shame. They're not ashamed of their sin, they glory in it. Uh, they're very pleased with themselves for doing things that are really shameful. We need shame. Shame is a good thing. It's, a, it's something God wants us to have because it helps us change. It helps us to see where we really don't want to, to be like this. We don't want to feel that shame. So we're going to do things the right way so that we don't feel shame. In Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, The Lord is righteous in our midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows no shame. He tells us here that, that God is bringing justice. He's bringing things on these people to get them to repent. And yet their lack of shame keeps them from repenting. But there were some who were ashamed and who did repent. Uh, and so later in the chapter, in, in verse 9 through 13, he says, For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language, that they all may call on the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. In that day you shall not be shamed for any of your deeds in which you transgress against me. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. I will leave in your midst a meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid." He says they are not going to feel shame anymore. Why? Because, well, they've decided not to be ashamed of those things? No, because they stopped doing them. Uh, because they are no longer continuing in lies and unrighteousness. And uh, they are now doing what is right. They are humble. They are no longer proud. And so uh, they do not have a need to be ashamed anymore. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15, also in chapter 8, verse 12, he says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time I punish them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. These people did not know how to blush. They were not embarrassed for the evil things that they were doing. The shameful things that they did did not make them feel ashamed. That meant they were not going to change. They were not going to repent. Shame is necessary. We need to feel that shame to motivate our repentance. But there is shame that is not sinful. Very often, shame is the result of sin, but not always. Not all shame is sinful. Nakedness is shameful. That's clear throughout the scriptures. And yet, nakedness is not always sinful. Just 
on the idea of shame not being always sinful, you can look at Acts 5, verse 41, where the apostles are beaten for preaching in the name of the Lord. And it says, So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. This was shameful, to be disciplined by the leaders of your people. Uh, to be told that you are doing what is wrong. It's, it, it's embarrassing. And yet, they were happy to take that embarrassment, that shame, because it was for the Lord, for doing what was right. And so, yes, it's shameful, it's embarrassing, but it's not wrong. When we think about nakedness, we should consider Isaiah the prophet. In chapter 20 of Isaiah, it says this, in the year that Tartan came to Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him, and he fought against Ashdod and took it, at the same time the Lord spoke by Isaiah the son of Amoz, saying, Go and remove the sackcloth from your body, and take your sandals off your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners, and the Ethiopians as captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. Then they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and Egypt their glory. And the inhabitant of this territory will say in that day, Surely such is our expectation, wherever we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? Now, he talks about Egypt and Ethiopia, who were uh, nations that were strong, that uh, were being relied on for help, and he says they're not going to be able to help. They're going to be taken captive by Assyria as well. But he says that they're going to be led away naked and barefoot, which he says, is shameful. It's to the shame of Egypt. And yet Isaiah himself went naked and barefoot for three years as a sign of that shameful nakedness that would be upon the Egyptians. What he did was shameful in the sense that it was embarrassing, but it was right. It was what God told him to do, and there was nothing wrong in it it was just embarrassing. It was shameful. Uh, and the point of it was that it was embarrassing and shameful because he's talking about what would happen to the Egyptians and Ethiopians. Even Jesus himself was naked on the cross. Uh, that wasn't his choice other than him choosing to submit to death. But uh, they, they stripped him of his clothes, they nailed him to the cross and lifted him up where everyone could see him as he died. But it was shameful. The whole process of crucifixion was shameful. But in Hebrews 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He, he knew this was shameful. He knew that it would be embarrassing. And he said, I'm doing it anyway. I'm despising that shame. I'm not going to bother about it. I'm going to endure it because there's a reason for it. I need to do this. And there are times when we need to do things that are embarrassing, that are we're they, they bring a, a feeling of shame to us because they're the right thing to do, not because they're the wrong thing. We, we should go ahead and do it. When you think of a woman giving birth, there's no sh shamefulness in the sense of uh, it's sinful or it's wrong for her to uh, have her body exposed to the people that are helping with the birth. That's, that's completely appropriate for what's going on. And yet, uh, in any other circumstance, that would be very, very shameful. So this is something we need to consider when we talk about nakedness, modesty, those sorts of things. There are occasions, there are times when those things, yes, they're embarrassing, but it's not sinful to be in that type of situation. 
If a woman has to breastfeed her baby and there's nothing that she can cover with, she can still breastfeed her baby. The baby needs to eat. Uh, but I do believe that women often don't even consider covering, uh, which they should, uh, because it's shameful to expose that part of your body. Uh, if it's something you have to do, then go ahead and do it. But uh, if it's something you could cover, go ahead and cover it. It's not a necessity uh, most of the time to be uncovered. For medical reasons, if uh, you need to get a prostate exam, I think that's a shameful thing in the sense of it's very embarrassing. And yet there's nothing wrong with it. It is a, uh, a good thing, medically speaking. When we get an examination by the doctor, we take our shirt off or whatever, I'm embarrassed to do that. And yet it's something that uh, we can do. It's, it's necessary sometimes. It's not something we're doing out of arrogance, out of a lack of shame. Uh, it's something we're doing in spite of our shame because it needs to be done. All right, so having dealt with that basic idea, let's talk about the questions. Here's the first one we're going to deal with. What about swimming costumes or bathing suits? Are there exceptions to this idea of we need to keep ourselves covered? Uh, if you go swimming, you go to the pool, you go to the beach, is it okay in that circumstance to take your clothes off, to be uncovered, keep your genitalia covered or whatever it is that you're keeping covered uh, when you go to those, uh, those places. So when we talk about exceptions, we're, we're talking about something that's still shameful, aren't we? We're, we're talking about nakedness being a shameful thing, even if it's not sinful. It's not something that we should be looking for opportunities to uncover. If we have the proper sense of shame, then we're going to want to keep ourselves covered. It's only when it's of necessity that we uncover our shamefulness, our nakedness. When we go to the beach or we go to the pool, why would we uncover our bodies? Is it for swimming purposes? You don't have to take your clothes off to swim. I know from personal experience, I almost always have swum with with uh, my my shirt on uh, I, in a couple of occasions I've taken my shirt off when I knew nobody could see me or at least no women could see me but even then I'm not very comfortable with it uh, I keep my shirt on and I can swim just fine with a shirt on Peter the Apostle felt the same way in John 21 in verses 7 and 8 it says, therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. When Peter was working in the boat with a few other men, uh, he didn't have a problem taking off his outer garment to work with the, the fish and all the things that were, were being dealt with out there. People on land, women and others, couldn't see him well from that distance, even though it's a short distance. But when he's coming to land, when he's coming to see the Lord, he swims. What does he do? Does he take off more clothes? No, he puts on his outer garment before he dives into the water. Uh, Peter knew that when he got to land, he needed to have his clothes on. Uh, and so he, I'm sure he was dressed enough uh, to pass for people at the beach today. Uh, if he had his undergarments on, which he did, that's probably more than what most people wear to the beach. And yet, he put on his outer garments before diving into the water. And you know what? He could still swim. Uh, he didn't have to take his clothes off to be able to swim. And he knew that he needed to have them on when he 
was at land and people could see him. Now, if you disagree and you believe to swim you have to be naked and you have to save somebody's life who's drowning, go ahead, take your clothes off, go save them. But you should have that feeling of shame that people can see your nakedness. Uh, it should never be an excuse to start doing that for pleasure, for fun, to say, you know, I'm going to take my clothes off so I can go have a good time. You shouldn't be having a good time with your clothes off uh, in public. That's a, that's a shameful thing. 